Hey, what's up guys? Um, today's a little bit of a lower energy video and that's because it is almost 5 a.m. here, but that doesn't stop me from raising the question, is the FX8350 by AMD still relevant to gamers? Let's go. Okay, so before we get into the benchmark that I used, I just want to throw this out there. As far as gamers go, I'm not talking about is the FX8350 still relevant to streamers, because I don't really think it is, especially if you're using the same rig to play the game as you are to stream it. And likewise, I'm not asking the question, is the FX8350 still relevant to uh, content creators? Because again, I feel like there are much better options all over the marketplace. Um, than the 8350. That being said, I did want to find out whether the 8350 can still handle modern AAA games with good graphics support behind the scenes. And that's exactly why I looked at using the uh, benchmark from GTA 5 uh, using 1080p as my resolution because I feel like that's the most common resolution that most people use. Also, uh, because I used a GTX 970 in this test, as well as a GTX 1070, just to see if there was much variance between the two um, in the results. The 970 is not going to handle 1440p all that well, especially with the settings I used. I used everything completely maxed out, except reflection anti-aliasing I turned off. And the reason I did that was because I needed to get the uh, memory required from the GPU down lower than the 970's 4 gigabyte limit. Obviously that wasn't an issue with the 1070, but to keep everything consistent, I just went ahead and used the same settings with the 1070 as well. So let's go ahead and hop right into that benchmark. So let's take a look at the graph and work our way from the minimum down to the maximum, then we'll talk about the average frame rate, which is really the most relevant frame rate anyways. It is worth noting that in the dips, so the minimum frame rate, the 970 fared worse than the 1070 in both tests. So it didn't matter whether the 1070 was paired with the 8350 or the 4790K, which was clocked at 4.7 gigahertz. I also wanna throw out there that the 8350 was a stock speed and not overclocked in any way, while the 4790K was overclocked to that 4.7 gigahertz. The maximum frame rate was a different story. These spikes were clearly in favor of the 4790K and it wasn't even close. The 4790K was spiking up into the uh, 117 range, whereas the 8350 only had spikes into the low and mid 70s, regardless of the graphics card. So the CPU seems to um, impact the high end and your ability to reach those high end uh, frame rates more than it does uh, having to do with the dips. And the last part I want to mention here is the average frame rates. Um, if you just go straight down the list, the 8350 with the 970 pairing had a 35 uh, frame rate on average. Paired with the 1070, the 8350 gave us 49 and a half frames per second, just shy of 50. The 4790K with the 970 fared just barely better with 37 frames per second. Whereas if it was paired with the 1070, it beat the 8350 by nine frames coming in at 58 frames per second. So clearly the CPU does have a lot to do with the frame rates in modern AAA games. And I use GTA 5 for a few reasons. Um, first off, I have it in my library already. Second off, it's both graphically and CPU demanding. And third, because it has a built-in benchmark, it allows me to have great consistency across the board. And yes, the 8350 was able to run it with no problems in general, even though it is listed as the minimum spec requirement at the CPU range for the game. It was able to uh, play the game just fine. There was, there was no big issue running this game uh, with either graphics card, it looked great on, in, in all cases, and because of that and because of this test, I would say that yes, the 8350 is still a relevant processor to gamers. Now, I do want to be clear again, I'm talking about just gamers. This is not a relevant CPU for streamers, for content creators. It is way too old. There are far faster things out there. In fact, I think most modern i5s will be all over the 8350, especially when you get into single-threaded performance 
But if you have a rig already that has an 8350 in it and you're questioning whether you should upgrade your GPU or your CPU first, especially with Ryzen and Vega just right around the corner coming from AMD, here's my recommendation. If you're a content creator, yes, get your CPU upgraded. If you are not a content creator in any way, then go ahead and upgrade your GPU first because the 8350, especially if you get a little bit of an overclock on it, is gonna be just fine for the foreseeable future unless you're playing at extremely high resolution. So if you're a 1440p gamer or a 4K gamer, then you might wanna consider that CPU upgrade. If you are a 1080p gamer or lower and you already have the 8350, just stick with it for a while longer. You should be just fine. Hey, thanks for dropping in and watching, guys. If you like this video and you want more of these sort of pose a question and answer it in a concise way, give me a like down below. Also, subscribe, share. Those things are super helpful. I'll leave Amazon links in the description below for any of the products that I mentioned here in case you want to buy those for yourself. I'm Shane from Hoosier Hardware. I will see you in the next video.